Father, as we get into your word this morning, let there be light. We take authority over spiritual darkness. Give us spiritual intelligence. Let the eyes of our understanding be flooded with light. And let answers come to people in areas of need. Our coming to fellowship in this service will not be in vain. We are returning transformed. We are returning encouraged. We are returning comforted by the Holy Spirit. We are returning obtaining answers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Okay, I'd like you to put your hands together again this morning. Let it be loud enough. Uh, let, it, let it get you fully awake. Amen. Uh, we're, we're dealing with um, overcoming fear or victory over fear, failure, and fatigue. Uh, this morning, I, I want to talk about how to deal with failure. But just as a way of revision, uh, last week, we were dealing with building your, our confidence, the conqueror's confidence. We didn't focus on fear directly. We had to talk about boldness. And one of the things we said is the fact that uh, the, the righteous is as bold as a lion. We belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I think I encouraged us to do some investigation or some viewing, you know, uh, documentaries about the lions. If there's anything that everybody knows about the lion is the fact that they are very bold. So no believer should be timid. And the scripture we uh, encouraged ourselves with, uh, I think that's in Second Timothy uh, 117 uh, or 17 for God has not given us the spirit a spirit of fear but of love sort of power and of love and of a sound mind and those three things should uh, get you excited that is the God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power that means I have power spiritual power you know growing up when some, when somebody has spiritual power you look at the person somehow that ah they're like you know, they have an advantage. Sometimes we dread and afraid of them. See, the guy has spiritual power. Now, that's what you have. And the highest power is what you have. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Spiritual power and of love and of a sound mind. If you dwell on those three things, destiny is made. Power to make changes. Power for impact. Power to subdue Satan. And then love to exhibit the nature of God, the kindness of God, to be an extension of God on the earth. And sound mind, for me, covers areas of intelligence, wisdom, discretion. You can imagine the Holy Spirit providing those things in you, and you are growing in it. You would not be an ordinary person. And, and, and that's a joy for us as believers, that we are not disadvantaged, we have the advantage by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talked about the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. I think that was in the second service or so. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. The name of Jesus is our staff of authority. It's a place of dominion. You can't be afraid when you have the name that is above all names. Glory to God. Uh, you can't be afraid when you have the name that is higher than all other names. And the Bible says, in my name, you will cast out devils, meaning demons, negative spirits, uh, demonic spirits are, are subdued by the name of Jesus. And you have that name, so there's no reason to be afraid. With the name of Jesus, you can also speak to circumstances to align and to adjust itself. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. And then we try to also dwell on revelation. Revelation is actually the very root of our confidence. When the word of God is revealed to you, you are emboldened by the things that you see. When you see it, you can't be afraid anymore. Uh, we, uh, we say something like um, that there's a difference between um, Bible knowledge and revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is when your inner eyes are open to a portion of scripture. You just see it. The day I saw uh, with long life, it will satisfy me. I've been reading it for years. But it, the, the day it came as a revelation that with long life, it will satisfy me and show me his salvation. He will satisfy me. One of the rewards, one of the things he wants to do to satisfy me as a son or daughter is to give me long life, is to help me live long. When you have that revelation, fear of death 
uh, is subdued. And even when thoughts of death comes, it is that revelation you use to cast it down. Glory to God. Uh, you need a revelation about uh, the family, about your children, about, about the future. Without revelation, you'll be living a philosophical life. You know, many people would live that philosophical life. When they talk, it looks philosophical. But when it's not grounded in scriptures, it's fake. It doesn't work. The power is in the word. And when people don't grow in the word, they use philosophy to replace it. You'll be hearing some statements that appear very, very nice. Those statements appear very, very, you know, you know, uh, uh, village kind, you know. But if it's not grounded in the word, you are powerless. God responds to his word. You are grounded properly. You are, you are properly fortified by the word. So we encourage that people, we should grow in the word. It is revelation about your own, your own future that gives you confidence about your future. It is revelation about your finances that gives you confidence that you will not lack. And everything is embedded in God's word. Revelation. Somebody say revelation. Say it louder. Revelation. And I said revelation is personal. It's not collective. We can understand the lecture together. It is individualistic. Uh, the things you are not seeing, you are not seeing. That somebody else is seeing it does not mean you are seeing it. You have to see it for yourself. And there's any prayer we've been praying. I mean, if you look at our prayer kit in the last few weeks, it is a lot of prayers about the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. When you see it, you are transformed. When you see it, you can apply it. When you can apply it, you can obtain results by it. A lot has to do with personal revelation, what you see. What you see, I wish I could <laughs> impart my own light to you. No, what I can do is to pray for you and teach you and encourage you to open your scriptures and study yourself. But, we, we, but when, you can, when you don't do that, you won't see it. And when you don't see it, you are limited. We are limited by our level of revelation. I pray that be, between now and December, there will be a revolution in your life. You will say the things you've not been saying before uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. God's word is never ending in terms of revelation. There are many sides to it. And as you dwell on it, you'll be seeing it from many sides. The things you saw in a verse before you got married, uh, the Holy Ghost will reveal it differently to you when you are now married. We see differently. So don't say, I know that verse. Or you, you don't know the verse enough. You've got to go over it again. We are studying at the book of Samuel, for instance, and it's just beautiful. I, I've always studied Samuel because of the life of David. Uh, and when we had to do that this month, going over it again, I don't know if you have been looking through it. You see how Saul emerged as the king. So much revelation about a broken heart. This man was, when he was called up to lead, he said he's from the least of the tribes of Israel, the Benjamin tribe. And his own clan was also the least. So he's like, I don't qualify so what qualifies people is their brokenness. All those people that you see very ambitious, very ambitious, they spoil things. They spoil things. It was, but the day they were to call him out, he ran away. They had to use revelation to even discover where he was. That was how he started. But the challenges, he didn't continue like that. He got to a time when he took things into his hand. You know, so, I mean, God's word is just sweet. If you can take time, you should take time and grow in the world. Another thing we mentioned, I think that was last Sunday, maybe in the second or third service, was beware of evil reports. Evil reports, if you don't know how to deal with evil reports, it can, you, can, you can develop a spirit of fear. I've seen cases where uh, maybe someone in a family dies of a particular disease, maybe diabetes or something. If you don't deal with it, you can attract that diabetes into your own life. Because just yourself thinking about it mourning about it for so long and then it develops into fear of that sickness and then becomes like a generational problem or it could be fear of death maybe an auntie dies or something and then you don't know how to deal with it or you hear something on the news and it's so prevalent on the news you flip all the channels and they keep talking about how how these three children died how these four children died and if you don't know how to deal with that fear of your children dying will just come on you Evil report. Evil report. The enemy transmits the spirit of fear through evil reports. It's like a forerunner. He wants you to receive it. He now begins to send the reports. And sometimes those reports are very punchy. 
It looks like, ah, this is what is happening in the world. How am I going to survive this? You have to rise above it with scriptures. Because if you allow that fear to remain in your heart or to remain in the family, after a while, another thing will happen. If it is the repeated happenings that will now begin to call generational curse. It can take two years. It can take five years. It will come up again. So when, when you hear something on the, and I do that a lot when I'm watching the news, it's either I change the channel or I, <laughs> I reduce the volume and say something to help me, to rescue me. I look for a verse. I look for a, an analysis from scripture. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, media is very deceptive. When media, they make it look like this is what is happening all over the world. Things are happening, yes, but there are great things happening every day also. Believe me, but because it's good things, it's no news. So when you hear news, another word for news is bad news. Okay? I mean, it's hardly you find a whole 30 minutes news, and it's all about, wow, the government has increased salary from 70, 70 what? 1,000 to... Amen. Amen, no. 500,000. And then from there, yeah. amen, Abi. Amen. Those who own businesses here, they're not saying a lot of amen too. Because they know the implications. <laughs> okay. Or, you know, and then from that news, they jump onto another one. It's very rare. Most of the time, as it's going, you just hear one, bam. Yeah, it's important. You learn to mourn with those who are mourning, right? Something happens to maybe a family member or a friend or something. Yes, scripture says rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. But you should know where the boundaries are. And not because you are superior in terms of um, you are better than others, but because you understand the mercy of God at work in your life. And then, and then if, you, if, if you are not standing, how would you help those who are falling? We are light. We are salt. God is our strength in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go. Uh, my, wow. My time is already gone. Okay, let's go to overcoming failure. Um, <laughs> Now, maybe I should ask, uh, I, I usually do that when, when I teach this. If there's anybody here that hasn't failed, uh, can you put up your hands? You've never failed in a relationship. You've never failed an exam before. You've never failed. You just, everything has been successful since the day you came to this earth. Can we recognize you this morning? We want to celebrate you. And we have a song for you this morning. Can somebody get on the keyboard, please? Uh, Anyone, we have a song for you. If you're online, just send us a wave or you can put your hand into your device. We want to see it in the service here. <laughs> just, just, if you've never, never failed an exam before, you know, or a relationship failed, you know, there's a song for you. It's a, it's a hymn that we usually sing to God. But what we want to say you too, you are like, you know, you are God, you know. We want to say, how great thou art. How great thou <laughs> Even me standing before you, I failed severally. Starting from secondary school, what we call high school, I failed WAG the first time. And it was painful because you had to sit for another one year. I've taken wrong steps before that you thought was the right step. All men fail. But the great ones rise again. That was one of the quotes that rescued me. Uh, I think Micah 7 verse 8. My enemy, do not rejoice over me when I fall. What happens? I will rise again. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be what? A light to me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise. Tell your neighbor, I'm rising up again. So say to the other neighbor, confidently, I'm rising up again. So the main um, teaching this morning is about the rising. Because many people, when they fall, they stay down. Failure is not falling down. Failure is falling down and staying down. All men fall. Relationship can break. Sometimes, from people's, I mean, marriage can fail. Health can fail. Business can fail. Finances can fail. Can fail an exam. But it, it happens. But we have to train people to handle failure the right way. Because greatness is in how you are able to rise 
from the ashes of failure. Ability to bounce back. Ability to self-encourage, not waiting for externals until pastor calls me, until the entire village gathers to pamper me and says, okay, what if they don't gather? What if they don't call? Are you going to remain down? All men fail, but the great ones rise again. And I believe I'm speaking to great people this morning. Amen. We are rising again from the ashes of any kind of failure. All men fail, but the great ones they rise again. Greatness is learning to rise from the ashes of failure. And that is a mindset that yes, even when failure shows up, I will rise again. I will bounce back. Not just bounce back, I will bounce higher. Now, uh, we had leadership school uh, yesterday. It was very beautiful, I think. Uh, and one of the scriptures we dwelt on, I want to just run through it. And you can pick powerful lessons from it. Uh, I think Matthew 25 from verse 14. Many of us are aware of that parable where Jesus Christ gave some people talents, right? And some of them produced, two of them produced, and the other guy did not produce. You will learn a lot from there. It will help our lives to produce better fruits. Are we ready to go? Now, we're reading a lot of verses. It's from verse 14 to like 20-something. No sleep. Don't be looking at it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them, right? Verse 15, and to one he gave how many talents? Five talents. To another, how many? Okay, and to another, one, right? To each according to his own. Now that other verse is saying, that means he gave to everybody something. There is an opportunity. There is an open door. We have it. No, no, don't say, I'm not talented. I'm not gifted. No, you are, you, he gave to everyone according to their own ability and immediately went on a journey. Verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and did what? And traded with them and made another five talents. I, I said to them at the leadership school yesterday, I want you to love productivity. I just want you to, because that's the nature of God. Many of us misunderstand the message of grace. Message of grace is not to leave you redundant and just there. Just as I am. From Genesis, you hear him saying, be fruitful and what? Multiply and replace. That is his heart. Multiplication. Increase. Business, career, ministry, multiplication, productivity. He says, and traded with them and he made, how many other talents? Five other talents. Verse 17, and likewise, he who also had received two, gained, how many more? Two more also. Verse 18. But I, I, I want us to look at this guy. And I hope this guy or this girl <laughs> is not in service this morning. And you learn a lot. I'm going to dwell on this and I will close, you know. But he who had received one, one, went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained what? Five more talents beside them. I want, you know, because we're talking about failure, you know, it starts with a mindset of success. That when anything is handed over to you, it must not remain the same when they check it after one year. Anything, business, purpose, uh, assignment, it should not even diminish in your hand. That is God's agenda. He, 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 has, he has given you the, the grace, the wisdom, the, 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 the open doors. But it must not diminish. One year minimum. Now, he said, I've gained five talents. Look at the way the master responded to him. His Lord said to him, well done, good and what? Faithful. Somebody said faithful. So your definition of faithfulness is not being nice. Many a time when a guy is a very faithful guy, people look at faithfulness as, oh, he comes to work on time. Uh, he, he, he greets people very well. He's very polite. We thank God for that. But that is not the full definition of faithfulness. 
if you are truly faithful, there will be fruits. Hello, because some of us, we pride in, I didn't talk anyhow, I was very there, and then what they give to you is not working. Something is not okay. I mean, Jesus said, well done, good. He didn't say diligent servant, faithful servant. I gave you the land, it was a marsh, it was a forest, and you have turned it out into a good land. Well done, perhaps. I gave you this team to work with, 10 people, and then at the end of one year, the operations, the effectiveness is better. Well done. I gave you this amount of money, and I came back, you have multiplied it. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over what? Many things enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 22. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. Wow. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over what? A few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So the way you are handling what you are handling now is how you will handle the big one. Don't deceive yourself by saying, because some people have that mentality of, ah, I am more than this officer. If they know the kind of gift I have, if they knew my, what God has spoken to me, I'm just enduring. Who you are is who you are. If you're inconsistent in the little things, you'll be inconsistent in the big things. So where you are is a demonstration of your true greatness. How you will be. There is no opportunity too small. There is no client that is unimportant. How you handle the seemingly small client is how you handle the big one. Stop waiting for a perfect time to be excellent. Now is the time to be excellent. So I've given you power over a few things. You will do big things like this. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Now, then he who had received the one talent came and said, <laughs> the guy is not here, amen. That lady is not in this service. Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, I only have some few minutes. What have you noticed first, Seth? Is this rude? Or what? Rude. The hard man was the leader, was the leader of the other two. All those, uh, my boss is hard. My company policy is tough. It's not an excuse for your failure. It's not. Those guys, they don't even mention that. They just... They, 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 made, they made do, is that correct? <laughs> With the climate, the environment. Have you noticed that the other guys, their statement was very straight. You see how short it was? You gave me two, sir. Now I've gained more two. He didn't tell the ogre the problems. There was traffic. The, the rain was falling. So I, I just want you to be practical with life. Many times when people talk too much, they are, they are, they are irresponsible people. Too much stories. Too much explanation. Look how many verses are occupying in my Bible now. My precious Bible. Okay, I was afraid. Now, next, next verse, 26. Thank you, Lord. 26. But his Lord answered and said to him, look at this. This is his Lord. This is Jesus speaking. You wicked and what? Lazy. Oh, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. 27. 27. So you ought to have at least deposited my money where? With the bankers. And at my coming, I will have received back my own with what? You, you just notice that it's after the increase. Nothing should remain in your hand because you are destined to be fruitful and multiply. Next verse. Therefore, take. This was the verse that scared me as far back as university days. <laughs> Take 
the talent from him and give it to him who has ten. All this thing, that I, know I mentioned philosophy and psychology, well, not psychology, psychology is a bit nice, okay, in the settings, so philosophical thinking, all those messages about equity, you know, equal, everybody must be equal, it's not, it's not the way God created the earth, the lazy will suffer, the irresponsible will beg, the one that refuses to take responsibility for his or her life, we suffer. It's not, it's not that everything should be equal. We are all servants of God. No, one has 11 now. And the other has what? I remember praying when I was on campus. I just want to be on the 11th side. Because when I looked at the guy with that zero, if you, are, if you don't wake up on time, you'll be part of the people backbiting, complaining, because it will annoy you. It will bring out the beast in you. And it doesn't make your life better. Because they are taking it from you and giving it to your fellow friend. It's not that uh, somebody far. Now you have zero. And in our house, how many? Eleven. I'm not sure that guy can survive. The gap is too wide. I'm not sure he has the humility. With the attitude I'm even seeing, I'm not sure he has the humility to start all over. So it's better... To take advantage of where you are always. So I noticed some attitude in that guy that I think uh, will help us to turn failure into success. Of course, number one is courtesy. He lacks the common courtesies of life. No respect. Look at the way he was talking. You know, I know you. Now, of course, which is the main problem? Blame game. He never said anything about himself in that sense. He just started blaming the boss. If you're like that this morning, repent in Jesus' name. Especially when you cannot think the boss. It's not ridiculous. This is your senior manager. This is your director. This is your whatever. You can't really change the person. Are you not going to fail because of that all through life? No, I'm not sure the boss was really like that. Blaming people. And some of us are like that. If not that my dad did this to me 10 years ago. If not that my uncle said this. If not that, if not that. No, no, you are lazy. The day you agree that you are lazy, if you are lazy, that's the day of your deliverance. You are slow in doing things. Maybe you are too playful. Maybe you, you put play before responsibility. The day you come to that realization and tell yourself the truth, then deliverance has, ha has happened. He was blaming, he was blaming his master. Blaming everybody. I told that, and the I said, look, when I was on campus, in December especially, uh, we, had the, we, had, we have exams just before Christmas. The Hamatan was very bad in those days. I don't know, thank God for climate change. It was very cold. And then electricity was scarce. So, you know, so, so somehow, every day, the dark, the cold. You have, all, you have like legitimate reasons not to go and study. Because it's so, it's somehow, you know, I was not used to using lanterns in those days. But when the result comes around March, Amatana disappeared. So I realized one, early enough that ah, by the time, and in those days, they paste the results on the wall. And people that don't like you know your matriculation number. Even me, they knew my number as a pastor on campus. The pastor, what he gets them. So I now realize that by the time the result comes out and Amatan had gone, you can't say it's because of Amatan. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water again. So I borrowed sense that during that Amatan, during those deficiencies of infrastructure, you bend down to study. The same thing now. Look at, I mean, we had the government, Buhari government came eight years. It wasn't too palatable. Now we're in another one. We're still looking. We trust God. But after 20 years, 30 years, you can't be telling your grandchild, the reason my life is like this is because of Brother Tunumbu 37 years ago. Your daughter, your daughter what, who is that? What happened? You can't be saying that. You can't be saying, you, you can't even say it. Because they will tell you some other people were in that same time. So how did they survive? This guy... The others that produced results are the same master. Beware of blaming. And, and it's a mindset of success. 
I'm not going to compromise, but my covenant will work for me at this time. I will produce the best as I can. And when that season goes, I won't be worse off. But stop blaming. Blaming others weakens you in destiny. If not my husband, if not my wife, if not that they did this one, if not, if not, it's a lie. Yo. The master told him straight, you are a wicked and a lazy servant. So one of the major reasons people fail is laziness, slothfulness. Something went amiss and then you have to brace up. I mean, we do fasting and prayer. If you have to pray for the spirit of diligence to enter you, it's better than casting out demons in the village that are not existing. These are things people should pray about. Grace for diligence. Because failure will always come. It is those who can persevere, right? Those who can press forward that overturns it. But if you are lazy at the sight of any little thing, I called them once and they didn't respond. And so what? And so what? What do you do next? What do you do next? You call again? You call again and again. I called them twice and they didn't respond. So you now left it for one week. No, you are lazy. That's not diligence. You call again. You follow up again. Oh, I preached in service and the message wasn't good. I feel bad. You preach again. You learn and preach again. It is the digging and the digging and the digging until you hit the crude oil. And then prosperity shows up. But there's a digging and there's a digging. Oh, relationship failed. Ah, it's painful. But you don't close shop. You take time, you pray, and then what? Where did I miss it? What? You will get another person. And that one will be better. But to not begin to tell everybody, all men are, what is it? All those things. It's, it's, it's irresponsible speech. All the ladies in church are bad. I even don't like that one. If I somebody even says, I don't know, I don't, I've not found my wife in, in the church. I, I feel somehow in this big church like this. How, how great you are. Why, why are you looking for? Have you met all the ladies in the church? I just say general like, oh, there's, no, there's no wife for me in this church. Okay, no problem. I'll give a certificate to the other ministry. Jesus prayed for someone. Jesus prayed. And he asked him, how are you now? He said, I see men as trees. Oh. That means he saw ladies with a uh, wig. They don't, they don't look like a tree walking. So I see when a tree walking. You know some ladies, when they wear those things, it look like a tree. They, that means it wasn't clear. You know what Jesus did? Jesus prayed for him again. If you are lazy, the again and again and again you ought to do, you won't do it. And when you are very near the success, you would have given up. He prayed for him again. You know, asked him, oh, he said, I cannot see man clearly. Blame game. Then number three, excuses. Maybe that's even the main problem of the guy. Excuses. And excuse is not the reason. Excuses. There's a book by Brian Tracy. I recommended it to the leadership uh, folks yesterday. If you can get it today, get it online. There's an e-version. Get the hard copy. The title of the book is No More Excuses. That's the title of the book. Many of us have been grounded in life because and it's, my, it's the economy, it's my former boss, it's the way the, the climate treated me. It's like saying because it was cold, I, that's why I failed. Because the weather was very cold, that's why I failed. That's not how you failed. Some other people went through the same thing. Some things you are using as excuses, some others, uh, it became a springboard for their success. You are not stranded. You are not stranded. Wow. Time has gone. Okay. I think we'll continue next week. So, let me close by encouraging us to ask for light. If you look at that scripture, Micah 7, 8, uh, the last part says, When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Failure is like darkness. The next thing is, okay, now that this has failed, or this has happened. I've lost the job. The relationship broke down, or something. I've lost the money. This didn't work out the way I thought. The next thing is, Lord, what should I do next? Light. Light. 
Oh, light is beautiful. Light. Ask God for light. In that scripture says, arise, what? Shine for your what? Light has come. When that light comes, you're able to rise out of the ashes of failure. But when I say light, light means you are an instruction away from turning failure into success. Light means you, that there is an instruction. There is a direction. Sometimes there is a correction from God. But that light will get you out of that darkness. So what you want to do is, Lord, give me light. Now that my boss hates me, Lord, and I'm here, what do I do next? And God will give you a strategy. God will give you an instruction. I've shared this very cruel story before, but it's part of light, light. You know, uh, one of my lecturers then, he was a very fanatical Muslim. His name is Dr. Aloko. I think he's a professor now. And I was a pastor on campus, but he didn't like me at all. And I was doing a, a course, and you know, they, they, they find a way of failing believers, you know, all those things. I said, Lord, what is the way? And God said, when you travel next, buy him a gift on your way back. That's light. He didn't say I should read more. Buy him a gift. So I remember I came to Lagos. On my way back, I bought bread. Uh, bread. <laughs> bread. Bread. Bread is in the Bible. Bread. Things in the Bible are very powerful. Bread. Fish is in the Bible. <laughs> I bought bread. And I bought, I remember buying non-alcoholic wine. So on the, on the Monday, I went to this door. I remember I knocked this door. I said, good morning. He looked at me. And I, said, I said, I travel. Because I mean, there was no exam. I was not after you changing my results. That's not just, I, I, I said, I traveled. And I just felt like buying this gift for you, sir. He looked at me like bewilderment. That, eh? He said, come inside. He collected it. <laughs> he now said, I should write my matric number here. Write it here. <laughs> I wrote it there. That was the end of my sorrows. <laughs> I passed this because they like graduated. We were friends. Pastor! I, I mean, I studied hard. People know. I wasn't asking him to, you know. So when I say light, you will miss road in Jesus' name. The light can be something that defies your academic understanding. You understand? You go just give an instruction to pray for your boss every day. Do you understand? He can, he can say, give a widow something. I don't know what it is, but ask him for light. Say, so when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. When Surulere, there was a bit of a crisis. The opposite the church in Surulere, there's a mechanic village, and we, we, we had problems with parking. And, um, and they didn't like us, you know. And we needed some spaces that they have for parking. And the government was threatening them that they should evacuate. It was very bad. I said, Lord, we need to resolve this thing. The church was growing massively. I said, Lord, what should we do? He said, call the mechanic village head and ask him what is the major project they have on their heart. So I said, I should call him. He said, ah, hmm. government said they would chase us all the way from this place. We don't even know where to go. But they say we should do horticultural beautification of the place. We don't know what to even do. We don't even have the money. I said, how much is the money for the horticultural? They gave us the amount. I told them in those days, I tried to give them cash. So they called the mechanic village team. They gave them the cash. They ran to the place. Called everybody. Church has done it. <laughs> we did the cast like this. And they were shouting. And the, the beautifying of the place beautified us also. Because they were just opposite us. And then by that Friday, they instructed all their people, clear road! They cleared spaces for us to park. And they were protecting the cars. You are one instruction away from sorrow to joy. It could be apology. That when you go to the office tomorrow, go and kneel down before your boss. I know you have three, three degrees. But kneel down and apologize to him for the way you spoke to him two weeks ago. Or something. Or write a letter. The thing will come to you. And there are sometimes God will tell you, don't do anything, I will take care of it. And then you hold your peace. And keep praising God. And you see God do something great. So, there is an instruction. There is a direction. 
There is a light. He said, do not rejoice over me. When I fall, I shall arise again. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light. Can you rise up this morning? Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Are you sure you are blessed this morning? When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light. Can you also agree to an extent that the state of the economy is a form of darkness? Hello? And so instead of complaining and blaming, is it not better to ask for your own light? Somebody here, your own light is leave the country. Yes, he will tell you, get thee out of thy <laughs> out of country. He will tell you. And somebody else, he will like Isaac, sojourn in this land, but do this. Instead of blaming, if not for the economy, in my life now I've been like, ask for your light. He said, when I sit in darkness, it's like failure, and the Lord will be. A light. That's a light for your business. That's a light for that your marriage. I don't know who you are. That marriage is almost tearing apart. And it looks like the end. The enemy must not have the last say over that home. But there's a light. Somebody here, you're owing a lot of money. That should not be the end of the road. But there is a light. I've owed people before myself. Sometimes you don't plan it. But there's a light. And God will tell you what to do. And you sit with the creditor. Okay, can we space the payment like this? And they agree. And then you see something lifted from you. Or God will tell you one of the cars you have in your house that you are worshipping. Go and drop it with the man. And they will let you rest. That's a way out. And there are times you can beg someone to forgive your debt. And they will do what? Forgive your debt. Ah, I'm telling you. Not manipulating them. That's a, that's a, God will give you an explanation to make. Like the prodigal son said, I will arise and go back and tell him. You know, he rehearsed it. I'm not, he wasn't claiming right. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make, be, make me as one of your hired servants. That's, that's a supernatural recitation that brought compassion. No, no, you don't get that. I'm your son. I know I left the house, but it's unfair. You didn't even look for me. You didn't even send me any letter. I knew I'm back. Get back and go back and get out of this place, my friend. But see the way he said it. He rehearsed it. There's an explanation the Holy Ghost will give you. I was on Arise TV some two weeks ago. When I was praying in the night for the interview, because I knew that they can be cantacarious on that platform. I was praying in the night. And as I was praying, there was an illustration that was coming to me. That there's a father that um, he didn't communicate to Junior very well. And because of that, it looks like he was wicked. On, I was just saying it in the night. I got to the interview. I said, I said something about the policies of government that your peers wicked. And then one of the panelists said, are you now saying that the government of this person is wicked? Ah. I said, it seems wicked. And then that thing I was saying around 12 midnight, 1 a.m., I just said it. And it changed everything. It's an expression God will give you to talk to your client. To present in the next project presentation that will change your fortune. Like light. Can we give God thanks?